Coach Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Uh, we we talked earlier this morning about the the defensive numbers and the progress the team's you know making. What, what are some of the things that you want to see the team continue to do, and some of the challenges they'll face tonight against this team? Well, obviously, it always starts with transition defense. Our ability to get back on a team that likes to run and can score the ball at a high level. Um, defensive rebounding, making sure we're finishing off possessions the right way, and then making having us get out and be able to get out and run offensively. But then defending without fouling. You know, uh, Towns does a great job of getting fouls as well as D-Lo, same thing. So we got to just make sure we're defending without fouling and then getting out to that three-point line. You know, the threes that they're taking, understanding where those shooters are, uh, contesting being the second guy off the ground so we're not fouling jump shooters. Just kind of building building off that, uh, I think the last last time we looked at the defensive numbers and saw them take take a good spike up was in January when you had a bunch of home games together. How important is this homestand, even as you get closer to the end of the season, how important is this homestand to kind of build those habits, kind of reinforce those habits, and kind of start building up the offense a little bit to match it? Well, our, our fan support is so great here, and our guys feel that energy, and they build off that, and they grow with it. Um, but again, it's going to be great to be home, to get some practices on our under our belt, and get that home rhythm. How would you describe the balance in terms from a philosophical standpoint of you know, crashing the offensive glass versus getting guys back? Like how, what do you tell the team about that balance? I guess, how do you try to balance that out? That's, a, that's an, a great question. And I think there's a lot of coaches out there that are trying to find that exact balance um, because it is trying to decide when you get back and the right and opportune times. And obviously, there's a, our analytic team does a great job of studying and trying to find out when those opportunities can be. And we're going to continue to look at different options, different variations, when in the shot clock you can do it, time, score, possession. We look at all those things. And so we'll just continue to look and find out those best options in real time. Coach Melissa Thomas with Florida National News. Uh, obviously, congrats on the win against New Orleans. Um, did, did you see the team kind of use that as momentum heading into tonight's game? I think we try to use every game as, as a learning as a as a learning curve and, and you know just understanding what we can do to improve on each game. And our guys are doing that whether whether it comes down to execution down the stretch, uh, the execution of a play, execution defensively, but learning and growing from each each moment. And again, we talked about this being a great challenge for us and a team that's that's playing very good basketball right now, winning la their last six, um, and you know eight eight and two in their last ten. Yeah, Coach, coming in six in a row, Minnesota, seven of their last eight since the All-Star break. Um, what are they doing well from what you've watched on film, even compared to uh, early November when, when your team went up there and, and, and beat them in, in Minnesota? What are they doing you know, at a high level you know, now later in the season? A combination of a few things. I, I think it's just that they're defending well with me and getting in transition, uh, deflections and steals. Uh, they do a great job on the offensive glass. And then obviously the shooting. The, they have a, a, a many guys capable of knocking down threes. So understanding where and how to get out to guys. They're, they're playing at that clip and they're sharing the basketball well. And they have guys capable of, of doing it individually as well. Uh, Jay Serrano, Orlando Magic HQ. Jay Serrano, Orlando Magic HQ. A little bit off topic here, but uh, the biggest question, I've just been reading the, poll, the uh, pulse of the just social media with all the Magic fans and everything. It's just uh, the question, the 14 games left after tonight, it's just uh, what is the status on Jonathan Isaac and is there any chance that we might see him uh, for, uh, this season? Well, we're going to continue to monitor his treatments and see how he goes with the rehab. And then it's just going to continue in that cycle just to see where he is and how he's feeling when it comes to contact and whatnot. But we're going to keep monitoring and see where he is as he responds to the rehab that he's been going through. Coach, you elected to go with your second unit to close out that game in New Orleans. Um, one of those those five guys is is Mo Wagner. Um, you know, how steady has his presence been playing multiple positions in the, the front court and just being ready when he didn't always consistently have nightly min minutes throughout the season? Just, just talk about his play um, of late and, and how consistent he's been. I really think it's it's a matter of just his growth. You know, we talked about the years he's been in the league and his ability to adapt to certain situations. And in that, in that instance, the other night, we talked a little bit before the game in which the lineup he was going to be with. And so his ability to play make, uh, to settle things down a little bit more. You know, we played off the elbows and out of our motion series. Uh, and he did a great job of facilitating and getting guys in certain spots. And so I think that's a big, you know, responsibility for him. But he's grown in the aspect of being able to understand that level of responsibility and knowing when to pick and choose is picking and choosing the times in which he goes aggressive and which he's trying to facilitate.
Obviously, uh, like the, the limit, there's some, there's some limitations still on Mark Hill from the, from medical staff. Mm -hmm. How how do you kind of operate within those to kind of meter out his minutes? Is it just we're playing him these six, seven, eight minutes in the second quarter, first quarter, second quarter, and, and then again in the third or fourth quarter? Do you try may, or do you think about maybe trying to save some minutes later in the game when there might be an impact on winning? Or how how, how do you kind of balance that out? Well, well, like we said before, I think a big portion of that is going to be come down to his comfort level. That's where we are with him right now. His comfort level of being back on the court. That's the the number one thing right now and then moving forward with that we talk about the different combinations of lineups we're going to use and being able to sub in at different times with him knowing he's going to run a certain stretch is actually is is helping guys gel together and different different looks and different chemistry so again with that with with Kel, it's his comfort level and then the ability to now bounce different lineups with him and find out what that comfort level is with that other group out on the floor okay Christo Saltis on zoom Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, since the All-Star break and with uh, the improvements that you made in, as a team on both ends, and especially on the, on the defensive end, what kind of foundation would you like to build as a team for the rest of the season about the next the well, I, well, I think what the foundation we're, we're trying to continue to build is is one of you know togetherness, uh, our defensive staples of being able to pro apply heat and pressure to the basketball, being able to protect the rim uh, at a high level, and then just being in our help side early, and then defensive rebounding. So I think we're continuing to build on that each game, understanding that if we take care of the basketball, we're allowing ourselves to play in the half court and defend at a high level. All right, thank you, Coach Mosley. Thank you, guys. It's been a while since you last saw this team on November 1st and you know what Wagner and Anthony were able to do, uh, Cole Anthony in that game. Yeah. Since that point, how much do you feel like this team has grown and what are you ready for tonight? Well, I mean, as I'm sure most coaches would probably say at this point, like, it feels like several seasons have come and gone since the November game. Um, but uh, yeah, we know that this, this team is, they're playing Pretty much around about 500 basketball um, in the last 20 games. They're kind of growing. You can see uh, them growing as a team. They certainly have guys who can you know, jump up and make shots. They gave us a lot of trouble with with their defense last time. Um, and you know, we've we've had uh, some games where we were heavily favored and we took care of business. But um, you know, those were against uh, teams that. You know, don't have the experience of players these guys do. Even though they're young, they still have good, experienced players on their on their roster. So um, we got to be on guard. It's always about a good start for us. Uh, I think they're one of the best defenses since the All Star break. Yeah. Uh, what have you noticed about how well they've been playing that end of the floor? Yeah, I mean, I get, you know, they start having two bigs. It gives you great length at the rim. Um, you know, they're aggressive. They play hard. They're really well coached. You can see what they're trying to do. Um, they play a lot of zone. They mix it in at opportune times to keep you off balance. And they rebound the ball pretty well. Uh, injury updates tonight. Uh, Jared, Ant, uh, Tori, and Jordan. Yeah, so J-Mac is out. Um, and uh, Vando is going through his pregame prep right now, so it'll be game time decision. Okay. And, and others are holding there. They're in. Okay. Jordan, day-to-day -day thing, just kind of see how it goes. Yeah. Out. Okay. yeah. With the young team, yeah. that veterans can be critical. When, when you bring in someone like Pat Beverly, it yeah. sounds like he's meant so much to these yeah, yeah. young guys. What, what's the day-to-day -day like? Um, it's, it's great because he's an ally for the coaching staff. Um, you know, he believes in what we're doing. Um, he helps hold uh, everyone accountable, including himself. You know, he's really kind of set the tone as we like try to adopt, adapt to more of a a defensive mindset, certainly to start the season, um, and you know he's he, he brings an intensity um, that you know not not all of our guys you know have in them naturally, but when somebody's playing alongside of him, it brings it out of everybody. So uh, I think you know he's been in many ways our most influential player on our roster. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah Chris. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the other day when when you guys face the zone, you, you want them to keep kind of running what you would normally yeah. run against man. Is that something you have to coach like for them not to have those moments of hesitation when they see a zone and yeah, say, sure. hey, I mean, run your stuff? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the most effective aspects of the zone is it makes everyone kind of stop and do something different. But reality is, you know, 
moving, cutting, driving, kicking, those things don't really go out of style, whether it's man or zone. So that's really much how we, we want to play. We play with a lot of randomness anyway. It's probably the hardest thing that zone has to cover because they don't really know where the guys are going to go. But um, for whatever reason, it just you know, seems to be a little bit of a, of a lag time for us to, to move to, to that type of mindset. But we're getting better at it. Awesome. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Coach. Yep.